Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and this video is designed to answer a very simple question that I see a lot, sometimes I get asked personally. Is Dragon's Dogma, the first one, still worth playing so many years after launch in 2024? And it occurs to me that even though the first videos I ever released on my channel were Dragon's Dogma, I never reviewed the game. This isn't a review, but it's uh, to answer the question, yes, Dragon's Dogma is still worth it. It will always be worth it. M maybe a little less after the second one comes out, depending on how that pans out, but we'll see. But uh, going back to 2012 when Dragon's Dogma came out, the game was in quite a state on the PS3 and 360 on launch. I played it on 360. Whilst I loved the game, the performance wasn't really acceptable. It ran letterboxed at 30 FPS and very low resolution. The base game also had quite a few pointless DLC microtransactions. You know, things like, oh, buy the deluxe armor set to get this weapon or that armor. However, the newer versions of the game, specifically the version you can grab on Steam, which is the one I'll largely be referring to here, but I suppose the PS4, PS5 versions are probably roughly equivalent, although I'm not sure if they run at 60 FPS, which is important. Dark Arisen on PC? Much improved. Letterboxing? Gone. You can play at any resolution within reason. Higher frame rates, which really help the beautiful animations of the game shine. All of the DLC is bundled in to boot, including the game's expansion pack, Dark Arisen, taking place on Bitter Black Isle. There are certainly some dated aspects of Dragon's Dogma, and it's not a perfect game. In fact, there are quite a few flaws with Dragon's Dogma, but the gameplay holds up extremely well. It was good then, and it doesn't feel remotely dated to me. It might not be immensely obvious to people picking it up, you know, now, but it's hard to overstate just how important this was back in 2012. Dragon's Dogma came out just a few months after Elder Scrolls Skyrim, and it makes that game look like a game from 1992 when you compare the combat. The main things that date Dragon's Dogma are the somewhat finicky menus and interfaces that you need to navigate. Whilst they are aesthetically pleasing in their own way, they are a bit clunky at times. And yes, the game does have other problems as mentioned. The world is relatively small and empty. The side quests can be a bit weird with just like a lot of them being kind of escort quests and characters don't really lip sync very well. And some of the presentation for, you know, dialogues and such is just very flat zoom in on a character whilst they waffle at you. So yeah, there are parts of the game that maybe are dated and it can be a hoo-ha to manage certain things. There are plenty of issues people raise with Dragon's Dogma. Some of them are fair. The game kicks off with an escort quest in the first hour, generally speaking, which is a tedious, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes of watching an ox waddle along insanely slowly, even if you can speed it up by kicking it in the face. But I think this put a lot of people off the game. You know, they, they start it up, they do the escort quest and they're like, man, this game's stupid, it's boring. And another thing that puts some people off was a relative lack of direction and not understanding how the pawns work. And I get it, I get it. Dragon's Dogma is a game for a sort of person. It doesn't perhaps have mass appeal. But hey, look at Elden Ring. If you told me in 2012 that Dark Souls, a decade from then, would become a mainstream game that sells tens of millions of copies, I would have been surprised. So if you play Dragon's Dogma and you don't like it, I can understand that. But the game is on sale so often, I think it's well worth picking up, giving it a shot at the very least. Get past the escort quest, see how the game opens up once you get to the city, and see what you think of it. The main things to enjoy in Dragon's Dogma, if you ask me, would be, of course, the combat, but also the... I, I don't even know how to describe it, the 90s adventure feel, the classic dungeon delving D&D style adventure. If you grew up playing games like Tower of Doom and Shadow Over My Starra, like I did, then there's a lot to enjoy here, as it feels like that, but taken into a 3D, fully open world environment. You have the classic monster designs. I, Dragon's Dogma has some of my favourite monster designs. They're all very understated in a lot of ways. They're not over-designed, they're all simple. You know, the, the Chimera is just a Chimera. They are classic monster designs, which some people might find boring or generic, but in a world where <laughs> a Chimera is going to be 18,000 feet tall and have laser guns in most RPGs, it's nice to get some game where the monsters just look 
like how they kind of should look. Sometimes an orc just needs to be an orc, and a dragon just needs to be a dragon. And there's nothing quite like the pawn system. You can raise and develop your pawn alongside your main character in a hands-off approach where you shape, but do not directly control them, which is extremely cool to me. The graphics are noticeably dated in some areas, being it's a 2012 open world game on consoles that absolutely couldn't handle it back in the day. But what the game was offering was pretty impressive. I can't think of too many open world games in 2012 that had, you know, fully dynamic time of day and lighting. And I think because of that, the visuals hold up. The lighting in particular is great. Equipping a lantern at night or just watching how the shadows like work in dungeons and stuff, it's, it's really good. And there are mods to enhance, you know, gameplay or upscale the visuals, such as a texture overhaul. But given Capcom's recent anti-mod stance, which is worrying, I'm not really sure if I would recommend anything like that right now until they make it clear what they're approach is going to be going forward. So yeah, you got some like kind of iffy character models and some low res textures, but the lighting really holds up, I think, and the art style is distinct in its almost genericness. You know, some say generic, I say classic, but it's all in your perception. Fortunately, vanilla Dragon's Dogma doesn't really need any mods. I say vanilla, I'm talking about, you know, vanilla Dark Arisen and not vanilla, vanilla OG Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> But the combat's amazing. Every vocational class in the game is cool or fun to play. I definitely advise playing it with a controller. The keyboard and mouse controls, they are there, you can use them. I wouldn't say they are ideal for a game like this. Maybe they'll be better if you know you're playing like a, an archer or something like that, but mm, use a gamepad. But really, when someone asks, is a game worth it in X year, what do they mean? from a financial standpoint, because you can pick up Dragon's Dogma for like five bucks and it's given me hundreds of hours of enjoyment. If you have more specific queries about the worthiness of it, please ask them down below and I'll do my best to answer you. If you are a new player picking up Dragon's Dogma, well, I have some largely spoiler-free videos on my channel, if you search Dragon's Dogma, which will give you some useful hints for starting out. Another one I'd say, is uh, I don't think Mage is a great choice for a first time player. Even if you're thinking of, you know, you want, oh, I want to play as Sorcerer and Mage and all that. Mage has a weird learning curve and I would suggest playing another class at least until you get to Grand Soren so you can learn the ropes and get to grips with the game as a whole before trying out Mage, which has a separate learning curve. But by all means, of course, play how you like. At any rate, please do check the game out when it's on sale. And give it a chance. But again, if you have any questions about Dragon's Dogma, please do ask them down below. And now I'm going to say, if this video was helpful, hit the like button. But that's only because I want to see if it makes the like button glow. As I saw that on another video the other day, and I thought, that's kind of cool. You don't need to hit like. You don't need to subscribe either, for that matter. But hey, if you want more Dragon's Dogma content, I do plan on heavily covering too. So maybe you want to stick around and share in that experience with me. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.